Here are three easy ways to achieve a 3D pixel art style look in Godot 4. So here's the example scene we'll be using with no effects applied. It's just a simple scene with a few boxes, a CSG pillar mesh that I quickly set up and some grass swaying just to give you a quick demonstration of what it'll look like with the effects applied. So let's get on with our first method. The first and easiest method is to just edit the viewport and window resolutions in the project settings so that the game will be rendered in a low resolution but stretched into a bigger window. Start by going to the project settings and then finding window under display. What we want to do here is we want to set the window width and height to be that of your target end resolution and then you want to change the viewport width and height to be a low resolution to create the pixelated effect. Here I'm just going to divide the resolution by 4 to make the pixels nice and chunky. One thing to keep in mind is that you have to make sure stretch is set to viewport down at the bottom of the settings and aspect ratio is set to keep otherwise it won't look right. So with that you get the effect of I find that this method creates the nicest quality pixelation, but it has a downside of everything getting pixelated with no control. For example, if you have any text or your UI elements, if you want them to be unpixelated, you're out of luck. It's going to look pixelated regardless, as you can see here. For this method, you're going to start by adding in a sprite 2D node to the scene. Give it a texture. I always just drop in the Godot icon as you do. And then stretch it out to make sure it covers the entirety of the viewport as denoted by the blue box on the screen. Once you've done that, expand the material drop down, add in a new shader material. And within there, you're gonna to wanna to add a new shader. Make sure it's of type visual shader and the mode is set to canvas item and then give it a good name. And then hit create. Once you've done that, make sure you double click the shader here to open the editor. And we'll start by adding in a UV node for our input. And then we'll also add a float parameter. This float parameter is going to control how much pixelization the effect has. So give it a good name. Just to help, I add in a range step hint. Minimum of 256, maximum of 512, just to give it a decent range, make it easier to edit in the inspector. A step of two helps with that too. Then what you're going to do is add a VEC2 multiply for your UV and also plumb in this pixelization. Then you're going to want to floor the result of that, make sure it's also a VEC2. And then finally, you're going to want to divide the result of that back by the pixelization parameter again. So put that in. We're almost done. Now we just need to add in a texture sample node. So the texture to screen. Plumb in our results of the UV maths. And then put the output straight into the color channel. The benefit of doing it with a visual shader is that you can see exactly what happens along the way. As you can see, we start off with a UV with a nice gradient shading. Then if you add in a default value to your float parameter, let's say 4, you'll see how it affects here when we multiply. Then we floor the result, it gives you this nice square. And then when we divide it again, we get our input UV but pixelated. Put that into your screen sample and then the Sprite 2D is just going to show whatever the main camera sees but pixelated. And here's how the effect looks. As you can see, the pixelization effect is very similar to the previous method but with an added benefit. Any UI nodes we place below the shaded Sprite 2D in the scene hierarchy will be unaffected by the pixelization, allowing for a clean UI. The final method I'll be showcasing is exactly the same as before, but instead of using a visual shader, we're just going to write the code ourselves. So I've got two examples of this code. Um, the first one is literally just a visual shader translated into code. 
So you can see we have our input float parameter up here it's with the same hint range ability. And then we have a UV variable that we're creating. We're going to floor the input UV multiplied by the pixelate float parameter and then divide that by the pixelate float parameter after a floor, just like in the visual shader. Then we just sample our screen texture with our UV calculation and you've got the exact same effect as before. The final method is a translation of a shader toy shader that I found using Godot's documentation on how to turn them into Godot shaders. So I create the eye resolution and then um, we create this pixel size X, pixel size Y, utilizing this pixel size uniform. Then we multiply that to create our cell size and then we floor the UV divided by the cell size and then sample the screen texture. Very similar to before. The effect is almost identical, but I find slightly less clean. I'm not exactly sure why, but yeah, you've got this method. If it works better for you, it works better for you. You can have a lot of control over how much pixelization. So this is with the pixelate set in at 512, barely any at all there, as you can see, but you could just scale it down, get some nice blocky, pixels if you want to really low resolution look um, maybe around there um, most of this video has been shot in all for graphic view if you want to try and have a low resolution fps style psx effect you could always just change the camera to perspective and get this effect instead and that's that for this video any code i used will be linked in the description below for you cheeky copy and pastes if there's any topics you'd like me to cover in godot for specifically please pop a comment down below and I'll try and sort something out for you. Cheers.